Thank you so much, Anthony, and thanks for everyone who's joining us today. I'm really excited to be here. Um, it's a positive thing that we're going to be able to talking about today an update on our fair share plan or, or making sure that our drivers in Seattle get minimum wage. Gig workers is a growing uh, part of the Seattle economy and more industries are being replaced by this type of gig work. Last year, when I proposed the fair share package to invest in Seattle's critical priorities and ensure a fair wage standard for drivers, it's because we knew so many of our residents were working without that fair share of wages. We wanna make sure every worker in Seattle gets at least minimum wage. And when you're a driver, also reasonable expenses. Now, none of us could have anticipated where we would be today uh, facing three significant events. The COVID emergency, uh, this pandemic is growing nationwide and has made our lives different in every regard. Coming on the heels of that is the economic crisis that it's created, which has hit so many workers and small businesses so hard. And then third, we're having a civil rights reckoning in the streets. We need to navigate through these to come back, not just as a strong city, but a more just and more equitable city. And that means making sure that our workers get the wages they deserve. None of us could have anticipated this, but it shows that this kind of legislation is critical to ensuring that those people are working actually get paid fairly. And we've seen that while the number of rides have dropped during COVID because fewer people are mobile, our drivers are also on the front lines. They're the ones that have kept working. They're not just delivering meals, they're taking people where they need to go. So we wanna make sure that when they do that, when they go out, that they're going to get their fair share, they'll be paid minimum wage and get reasonable expenses. Many, many of the drivers and their families are afloat today, partly because of the pandemic unemployment assistance and an additional $600 like the city lobbied for in Congress. Because they were treated like employees for those benefits, it's kept some of them afloat. But we need to make sure that when they work, they get paid fairly. We know there's a long way to go to ensuring that drivers are given all the protections that they deserve. But this is the first step. It's fair compensation for drivers and our transportation network companies like Uber and Lyft. Today, we're announcing a wage standard that will act as a floor. That means drivers can make more money, but our legislation will not allow any driver to be paid less than $16.39 for an hour of work, plus their reasonable expenses. That's the minimum wage, and we want to make sure that these drivers get what's fair. To achieve that wage, we are sending down legislation in the coming weeks to the city council, which will increase the average earnings of drivers by 30% and ensure they, pay, they are paid for all of their time working in order to create a fair wage for drivers and compensate them for their reasonable expenses. Right now, drivers pay all of that themselves. They have to pay for the gas and the upkeep. They have to pay for their tabs and their insurance. So we wanna make sure that the companies that benefit from those uh, expenses actually give the drivers uh, return on the money and pay the expenses related to their driving. Our studies show that about 84% of the drivers driving today will see their earnings go up as a result of this new pay standard. I really wanna thank James Parrott and Michael Reich who undertook a rigorous study of driver wages and expenses in the Seattle area to help us determine what would be the right rates and what would be fair compensation. In addition to a rigorous academic study, we also conducted outreach with almost 11,000 drivers through telephone town halls, surveys, roundtables, focus groups, interviews. We needed to learn their priorities too to make sure this legislation advances their interest. One of the top driver priorities was that they need higher fair pay. I am hopeful that today's legislation will help solve that critical need. It's also worth noting that our outreach and academic study both independently co corroborated two really sobering facts. Most drivers are from low income families and the majority of drivers are from communities of color and immigrant and refugee communities. I know that Seattle will always stand by its values. We know that our communities of color, particularly our black community, have not had their fair share of the American dream. 
that systemic racism is built into every institution, whether it be policing, education, or economy. We need to make sure that we as a city are taking every step possible to open up the doors and make sure people are treated fairly and get the wages that they deserve. By paying Uber and Lyft drivers a fair wage, we will help build economic resilience in many of our immigrant and refugee communities and lift up workers who have been too often marginalized. I've sat with drivers, I've met their families. We need to make sure that if they are there doing that work for us, that we ensure they get the wages and the expenses that they deserve. We also understand that many industries, including ride sharing industries, have faced a deep economic contraction. As we rebuild our economy and the city in the wake of COVID-19, we got to build back better and more just and more equitable. And one way we do that is to make sure drivers, drivers get a fair wage and reasonable expenses. Our legislation will be transmitted in the coming weeks. I look forward to working with the city council to help our rideshare drivers make sure they get the fair wages. And today, you're gonna hear from two really exceptional drivers who work long, long hours to support their families. But those long, long hours are taking people where they need to go. Um, it is a service industry in the strictest sense. I hear the, the stories, the good and the bad of what drivers encounter, but it's critical part of our infrastructure. Amazing woman you're gonna meet now, Fana Abreja. She's a working mom with two kids at home and another one on the way. And she is truly one of the bright lights of our city and someone I'm really proud that we can call a Seattle resident. So take it away. Thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, my name is Fana Abraha, and I have two kids and one on the way. Uh, we are driving for over since 2017, and my husband is an Uber driver too. It's been a driver for the past three years. He was a doctor when he was in Ethiopia. But after we came here, he took two exams in Ethiopia, but now he is taking the third exam. He's planning to take it, but unfortunately he doesn't have time and uh, he doesn't have financial freedom to take the third exam because it's so expensive. Because of that, we're just uh, struggling so much. So sometimes he has to work between me and him. We have to work 16 to 18 hours. So we don't have time for a family time other than driving Uber, we don't have other family time or we don't have time to spend with our kids as a family. So sometimes if I have to stay home, like if my kids are sick, I have to stay home like with my kids and he has to cover both shifts by himself, like 16 hours or 18 hours by himself. When that happens, my kids don't even see him for a week because he starts early in the morning when he comes the kids are sleeping so sometimes they don't see him about for a week or so so we're just struggling just because we don't get paid enough so we have to stay on the road like for a long hours and a lot of time so because of that we cannot pursue our future and our career as as a doctor or as a nurse so we are saying that if we get share pay, we can have enough time and the money to take the exam. The exam by itself, it takes about $2,000 to take the exam for my husband. As I said, we don't have that much money right now. Sometimes even when we have like extra bill, like when our car broke or if we have to change the tire, we even work more and that hours, like 20 day, 20 hours or 22 hours a day. So that takes a lot from our life, which is, you know, sometimes my kids ask me, mommy, why don't you take me here? And why don't you do this for me? I can't afford it. I can't afford buying stuff for them. I cannot take them for vacation. And in fact, my daughter told me when she was four years old, she said, mommy, can you take me to Disneyland? I said, yeah, I will take you when we finish school. And she said, why did you have me if you cannot take me to Disneyland? I was so 
shocked when she said that to me. So that's really broke my heart. I wish if I can afford and take her there. But unfortunately, I cannot do that. Yeah, so what I'm saying is we need a better pay. Sometimes, you know, I remember one day I took a passenger from the airport to Pewalaps and they charged him $120 and they paid me $42 and they take the rest. I, I paid the gas, I paid the insurance, I risked my life on the street. So I didn't think that's fair, like to get paid only that much amount of money. So yeah, that's what what I'm trying to say. So hopefully everything will be changed. So thank you for your time and thank you very much. Brother Ahmed will share his story with us too. Thank you very much, Fana. Uh, thank you, Mayor uh, Jenny Jenkins. Really, I feel, uh, I, I know my feeling today and my emotion, like uh, you are really a great leader. The promise that you did for us is what you are sitting in front of us today. And uh, thank you very much. I am a man, a father who has a kid, teenage boys living, you know, I have a closed door, uh, another family who has also in a teenage. Uh, the, the, my, my worries is like the question that my kid is always asking me, Dad, uh, the neighborhood family, they always go out, just having a time together, going dinner, just having like, you know, uh, for their kids going to sport, playing around and doing everything. Why don't you give us in a time? And I always tell them that, Dad, if I sit with you and enjoy with you, we will not, I will not have, I cannot pay the bills. I cannot pay the rent. I cannot put the food on the table. And I cannot do anything, shopping, or whatever you need. So I know one day the, the time will change. And definitely we will have any fun together, go around, play together, enjoy together, have any time together. This... We know, I know, it's not only me or Fana who has this problem. It's the ridership drivers who most of them, depending to this job, really having the same issue we have, and they cannot get any chance to enjoy with their families anytime. Seven days a week, 12 hours I drive on the road. You know how hard it is sitting two of hours in the car and driving, delivering a people and food and everything, making a service of the community, but you cannot deserve what you are looking for. You can't be. Always, when the rent comes, I call where I, I the apartment I live with, and I tell them that, could you please just make for me an payment plan or something like that? The reason why, the last, the, the time I started for Uber, until today, I just realized every single morning, action required from the app and says, if you don't say accept, you cannot sign in. And that gives me lowering always my income, going down and down and down every single time until I see that they are profiting a lot of money and I am only just making, I can't even survive and pay the bill of my family. We really need a fair for the fair, uh, I mean, uh, at the pay, we really need the fair for everything about the uh, 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 ridership companies. The, the study came out saying like $9.18 are drivers working. That is really truth if it is not even lower than that. And we need a fair like the leader like you just to stand for us and give us like the, a life that we deserve to get. We are really human. We are just, we like to our community. We want just to deliver whatever job we have and go everywhere that our job takes us, whether it's 12 hours or whatever it is, but we need to save our families and feed them and give them what they need. We cannot work like the way we are doing for every lifetime. Definitely one day we are, 
we will get retired and we don't have anything. So we need help. We really need help. The community we are from, we are most of us from uh, Africa, and we are most of us depending to this job, and we are waiting the leader like you, Mrs. Jenny, really 2019 when he was just making a speech, I listen to you, and still I see that the steps you are taking is the promise that you made for us, and I'm sure you will do it, but please and please make fair pay for us, and we need to have a time with our families. Thank you very much. I'll just hand on to Nicole. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Hello, everyone. Nicole Grant. I'm the Executive Secretary Treasurer of MLK Labor, and we're an organization that represents over 100,000 union members in King County. And here to say thank you and to show our support for fair share and for this fair wage standard for drivers at Uber and Lyft. Most of all, I want to thank drivers. You are providing a essential service that is critical at this time, but really has been essential to transportation in Seattle for almost a decade now. People love it. And without you, there would be no Uber and there would be no Lyft. I also want to thank our mayor, Jenny Durkin, for being a tireless leader on this policy. You have been with us since the beginning on this very important labor policy, and I am immensely grateful to you for your leadership. And to all the people who have been a part of the coalition, this is a very popular law that's being introduced that's supported by a coalition of over 65 community organizations, including groups like the Transit Riders Union, Transportation Choices Coalition, and HDC, which represents the interests of low-income housing. The reason that so many believe in this work is because it's right and it's natural. It is right that a person who works hard in service in Seattle should have a wage that they can live on and that they can support their family on. This law does that. This is also a law that is going to create equity at a time when it is demanded fiercely. Black Lives Matter. And I think people are aware of the racial and gender pay gaps in our city. What that means is that black men and especially black women get paid less than their white counterparts. And for black women, many make just 54 cents on the dollar. And this disparity, this gap, is not an accident. This happens because of real techniques and choices that businesses make to save money. And the only way to get this right is to make a point of changing it with laws like this. And so I have very proud to be able to support something that will help close the gender and racial pay gaps in our city. To wrap it up, I just want to say that this is what we do in Seattle. We find solutions. We make things fair. This is the city that pioneered the $15 an hour minimum wage. This is the city that created a wage theft ordinance to make sure that things are fair and people always get paid for the hours that they work. And this is the city that started paid family leave, some of the best in the country, so that people that are having a baby or parenting can get by during that time. Seattle has always shown the country and the world how it's done. And this is another chance for us to do that with the fair share policy that will give a good wage to Uber and Lyft drivers. Thank you very much, Nicole. This is now the Q&A portion of today's press conference, and I would like to invite members of our press to uh, use the hand-raised feature. Um, I have not received any 
RSVPs for questions up to this point. So I'm going to open it up to the floor for any of uh, members of our press who would like to ask a question. Well, okay. Uh, I'm noticing that no uh, press corps members are raising their hands, so I will turn it back over to Mayor Mayor Durkin. And if you have any closing thoughts, uh, um, take it away. Thank you, Anthony, and thank you for the people who joined us. I think there's no questions because there's no question about how right this is. Um, and I really want to thank Ahmed and Fana for being here, and Nicole for her steadfast work for workers. I hope you listened to those drivers and thought about who we are as a city and a country. The parents could work those kinds of hours and not have enough money to support themselves, their family, and their rent is just wrong. If you work a full-time job, if you work those kind of hours, you should be able to have time off with your families for yourself. Your family members should be able to sit for exams to become a doctor in this country if they had the training in another country. And we know that the bills we've passed to date that Nicole talked about, family medical leave, um, $15 an hour. Those apply to employees. And so many companies now benefit from the work of people who are not considered employees that we got to step in as government to make sure they get treated right and get treated fairly also. That's one reason I'm so excited about this legislation, because anyone who's been in a rideshare car, which is most people in Seattle, knows that those people are working long, hard hours, driving, driving, driving. They deserve to get paid, get paid fairly. And we know the companies have done well. They went public. They earned billions of dollars for their shareholders. Well, let's use some of that money to compensate drivers. I think we can do that. We'll be transmitting this legislation and hopefully we will see that the drivers you've heard from today and the people they know They'll work the long hours, but they'll still be able to pay their rent, have time for their family, and yep, even take their kids to Disneyland. So have a great day, everybody. And thank you so much, Fana Ahmed, for the work you do and for being here today.